Clarence Warlock, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you much, Frankie. It's a pleasure to finally uh, get a chance to talk to you, and, and uh, it's kind of nice because uh, even though you're, you're two hours uh, behind us, uh, it all kind of kind of works, you know. <laughs> well, we've been playing some serious hit and miss too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have, and uh, that's the thing, you know. Thank God for the internet and the email because uh, <laughs> we're afraid of that. I don't think we'd be able to do this right now. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, for those uh, for the people out there that don't really know a whole lot about you. I know they know a lot about your dad, and but uh, maybe you about your brother Billy, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, for those who who aren't really familiar with you, uh, uh, Lance here uh, is a movie musician as well. He, he's like I guess you could maybe say like a Tim Rice or a Tim Burton or or a Danny Elfman, so to speak, when it comes to certain uh, theme songs and whatnot. And uh, uh, tell the audience uh, what what is it that you normally do in your job position. I guess what it would basically be is a music composer, you know, writing and scoring and producing music for um, various projects, be it film, be it video, be it commercial, be it independent, you know, any and all of the above. Okay. And uh, so basically, any type of movie, basically, that you will be able to get, you could possibly do a score for. Sure. Okay. Well, I should say that is definitely the desire as, you know, as the ability grows to step up and be one of the, you know, uh, one of the guys I really am, am loving right now is, is John Ottman, who, of course, just did all the music to Superman. Okay. The uh, recent uh, Superman film? Yeah, as well as the Halloween H2O. Okay. okay. That was where I first... Uh, was able to, to get in touch with John, and he he and his career have just taken off. Yeah, and uh, now with, with that, uh, now with the you being uh, part of the, the Halloween, because a lot of people uh, will probably mention this later about the uh, 25 years of Terror DVD, and you were a part of that music-wise. Uh, now, has uh, music always been a passion to you? Yeah, I would say, you know, I actually am a drummer at heart. I've been playing drums since I was nine. In fact, still still to this day, part of my job description is I teach. I've got right now about 20 students, and I have taught drums for 10 years, and my students have ranged from, say, eight years old up to about 50. Oh, wow. So that's where the true passion, you know, really comes from. Okay. And that was thanks to Dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, do you, uh, like, part-time when you're not composing music for your movies or helping other people learn how to play instruments, uh, are you in a band yourself, or? You know, I've done that, and I did that for years, but now, because I'm not able to devote the time that I would like to, I really spend a lot more of my off time trying to get more work with music for movies and stuff. You know, I'm always out there trying to hustle people and let them know, hey, this is what I've got, here's some demo material, you know, and of course I'm always trying the best I can to perfect and and work on the craft, Um, taking it more out of the drum range, of course, but just try and broaden my abilities. Oh, yeah, and uh, that's, uh, and a lot of people need to realize, too, you gotta, you gotta not only have time for it, but you gotta really have the passion for it to really be a part of that industry. Yeah, yeah, you got it, you know, and and as far as, you know, film music, as I always remember as a kid, always having, for some reason, the soundtrack, you know, uh, even though my dad doubled Richard Dreyfuss and and, and did the cage scene in Jaws, I ended up with the Jaws record, (laughs) and I always had, you know, all of the soundtracks, and believe it or not, as cliche as this may seem, after I had the ability to be a part of Halloween 2, John Carpenter's assistant at that time gave me a stack of every John Carpenter soundtrack record. Now, mind you, that dates me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, and all of a sudden, I mean, it, my interest took off. I have more of a soundtrack collection nowadays than I do a standard rock band. Okay. Well, that's amazing. That's... Uh... Uh, it's kind of nice to have a mix of uh, different uh, film soundtracks. That's kind of, kinda, you and I are kind of like in, in that situation because, I, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, nowadays, when you talk about a good soundtrack, it, it, a lot of stuff that, uh, remember from movies, 
don't ever get played on the airwaves anymore. Yeah, correct. And you probably have never heard my show ever on the radio, but uh, we're online at pioneer90.org. Uh, but uh, I do a one-hour variety show, and uh, that's basically based on stuff like that. Like next week, uh, for next week's show, I'm doing a tribute to the Back to the Future uh, trilogy. All these films and uh, playing stuff that normally has not been played in a long, long time throughout the movie and playing, of course, clips and sound bites. And being a part of the, you know, soundtrack industry and whatnot, it's kind of nice to, you know, have, like, for me, I also ran from, like, Back to the Future to uh, Eddie and the Cruisers and all that. So it's kind of nice to have a soundtrack that nobody really cares about anymore. <laughs> Exactly, you know, and it creates such a feel and such a mood that I think, you know, it seems like if you throw on that soundtrack, I mean, similar to the bands anymore, but but it always evokes a certain emotion, and that's what's always, to me, been so powerful with it, because with a certain instrument, let's say, you really can create a whole mood very, I say very easily, it's just amazing, and, and you know, for record, I, I own the Back to the Future trilogy, because oh, yeah. it's just absolutely yeah. too cool. Yep, yep, definitely. Now, uh, with, with you uh, being a composer and whatnot, now, you talked about using the drums. What other instruments uh, do you use uh, when you perform uh, scores and whatnot? Mainly anymore because of the simplicity of having the home studios. It's, it's a lot of it is keyboard-based and sequenced, so... You know, I might have a sound library featuring a full-on orchestra, but the the style in which I get that orchestra played is through a keyboard. Okay. You know, so that is one area of expertise that I'm trying to continue to develop um, just to make sure that my foundation is pretty strong because anymore to do mock-ups or even some lower-budget pieces it's really okay to not have a full orchestral setup on a sound stage and and go in and and having the budget to record you know the l a symphonic you know yeah, yeah. orchestra sure. I can purchase it now in a library, and there's times of course that that would not fly and but you have something to show you know the director and the producer, hey, this is kind of the sounds I'm going for they in turn can say, okay, I get the vibe. Yeah. Now, of course, we want to bring it to the bigger picture, but anymore it can really be simplified with, with the keyboard use. Now, in, in your uh, orchestra as well, do you... Uh, now, obviously, uh, you're not by yourself. I'm sure you... Do you have uh, other people that help you out with your... Business? Actually, I do. I have... Uh, our Unit 12 Productions is our company, and I do have... I have one partner that him and I team up on almost every project. It kind of depends on the project. seems like typically anymore when you see, you know, that this or that movie was composed by this guy, generally it's one person. And and I understand, I think ego-wise and for the sake of trying to say, you know, hey, I can do this myself, but I tend to think and my partner and I think that with the two heads of us, it, it, it lends us to have a little bit broader range. Now, that being said, if we're working on a piece that somebody says to me specifically, look, I really want a real saxophone. I really want a real guitar. Then I would probably bring in at our disposal any professional that we have access to yeah. and hire them to play a specific part. But I do have a partner that him and I work almost almost together on everything. There's been a couple exceptions. Okay. And and now with that, too, uh, now you said you've been doing this for quite a while or playing music for, what, the last 10 years, you said about, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, with how music be a passion of yours, uh, did you ever thought about being in radio at all or anything like that or any other form of uh, musical performance? Well, you know, what's interesting on that note is, you know, for a long time as well, I worked at a music store, which, you know, we sold guitars and drums and amps and PA, and with the owner of the store, him and I would get together, and I would voice all of our radio spots, and because I knew a lot of the DJs and program directors at the local radio stations, they would in turn try and hire me from from me turning in our spots, Okay. and I was never opposed to it. I think that where I'm based out of, I don't really care for what they play. Yeah. And, 
you know, I don't want to say that it would have to be the right thing, but at the time of what I was trying to pick and choose and really push in the musical side with, with the scoring, it really took away from that time. But I've always wanted to keep that door open because I love the, I love the medium and I love the voicing and the interaction of, of, you know, it is still music and I think it would be great to deal with a lot of the people that call in and, you know, just general music questions. Oh, yeah. And uh, with, with that, uh, too, uh, being part of the radio industry, are, are, are you a fan of the XM satellite radio or the Sirius satellite radio? Do you ever get into that at all? Or You know, I haven't really taken a lot of time to do that yet anyway. Okay. You know, I don't doubt that it's going to be the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that changes the way we listen to music. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that I'm all for it, of course, you know, and, and maybe it tends to deal with the soundtrack side more, but I think my, as I get older, my range of music appreciates and broadens because now, you know, I'll listen to stuff that 10 years ago, you know, you wouldn't catch me putting yeah. on that CD. <laughs> and now I just want to really take in all of it because... You know, hey, just because it's not exactly what I like, you can still gain a lot of knowledge, I think, from listening and keeping your doors open. Oh, sure. That's definitely, and that's kind of how, like, even, like, when you watch a movie, you know, when you when you get into the soundtrack, when they have music playing during certain scenes, that's why, that's why Back to the Future has always been my favorite movie, because it's just, you know, the music, you know, by Alan Silverstreet, you know, it's just so uh, uplifting. I mean, it's just like you're actually there, in the while the acting being done, you know. Yes. See, and I always say that to people. I say, you know, imagine, imagine if the music was gone. I think sometimes people, sometimes I, you know, I've often heard that the average, and I say that loosely, the average m movie viewer might not always recognize the soundtrack because it really is just a little bit of a supporting cast. Yeah. It doesn't stick out. To me, that's almost all I'm listening to. Of course, I'm enjoying the movie, but yeah. I'm picking up on every nuance that they're doing. Yep. And, you know, I often try that. I put the mute on and see if it's as exciting. Okay, yeah. You know, it can really add that element yeah. of, you know, over the top. So you kind of challenge yourself sometimes. Like, do you ever, like, like say, after you see a movie and you hear the music or whatever... Do you ever try to, to kind of, not so much copy that, but, uh, like, try that in your own studio and say, Oh, yeah. yeah I could probably yeah. do that better than the composer, sir. You know, that's, I think that's a lot of it, and that's also the reason why the soundtrack CDs is because you start to see how this guy and that guy put, put two or yeah. three of the same instruments together and come up with two completely different fields. Oh, sure. And so you start to really think, oh, you're kidding me. I really dug the way he did that. I think I'm going to take that same approach because even though, you know, like you said, even though if I'm trying to copy him, which I think is a great way to do it because yeah. it's great practice, it'll still come out to be different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, it, you know, that was the way in the beginning days of the drums for me. I would put on Kiss records and copy what I heard, which I think gave me a sense of just, okay, I can do that, or, wow, I really got to work on that because I'm still struggling. Sure, sure. And it kind of gave you something to, you know, compare it to instead of always feeling like, am I really doing this okay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. start second-guessing your abilities because nobody's right there going, hey, you know what, that's really cool. Yep. You know, all you have is, wow, that's really neat. You know, you like it, but... Then I always say, you know, how far is me liking it going to get me? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's the thing, you know, everybody has a different ear, obviously, and different uh, sound quality and whatever. But, you know, I guess if you're really passionate about it and you really believe in what you're doing, those opinions, even if they say negative things about what you're doing, they, you know, those opinions really don't matter. If, you're, if you really believe in what you're doing, you know, who knows where you can go from there. That and the fact that, I, and I've read this and been told a thousand times, just because you give a director something that might not work does not mean it wasn't good. Yeah. That's the toughest thing is to get into their minds and be able to decipher what they're really saying to you, then being able to put it into a musical form and they come back and say, you nailed it. Yeah. 
You know, there's always some some things that need to be shifted and changed, and, and that's fine. But trying to just grasp what they're telling you is sometimes tricky depending on their communication. And, of course, I believe it's definitely up to me to pick through what they're saying and try and, and, try and get it as right as I can. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's kind of, you know, when it comes to, like, doing, like, the work, you know, not only being passionate about it, but, you know, obviously, you know, just like, and I think you, you take a lot of inspiration from your father just because, uh, after talking with him, you, you, it seems like, you know, because you guys have, you're, you're a hardworking family, obviously, and, and you believe in what you're doing, and, and when you believe in what you're doing, good things can come out of that. That's why your dad did so well. That's why you're doing so well. That's why your brother Billy is doing so well, because you guys have a passion for what you're doing, regardless of if other people say, well, dude, that's not what you should be doing, you know? Yeah, and, and you know what's interesting is, is with my dad and my brother as guys that I look at, those are two guys that I can honestly say they are doing exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah. They set out and said, well, I want to do stunts. Yep. And lo and behold, my dad's doing it. Yep. You know, Billy says, well, I, geez, I'm, I might try this acting thing. Yep. And, oh, okay, well, geez, it worked. And you know, I don't know a lot now. of people yep. in life in yep. general that are saying to me, man, I am really doing exactly what I've always wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and those two guys, I've often been frustrated at them <laughs> and then, of course, pleased. But yeah. it's like, man, you guys, you guys are, are technically, to me, just living the dream of being satisfied with what you do. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think that, you know, I don't care if it's managing a McDonald's. If that was your goal and yeah. you did it, you should be proud of it. Yeah. And these guys are. They're totally doing it. Yeah, and, and that's great, and, and, you know, like I said, hard-working family, and then just, you know, you know, uh, like now with you, uh, uh, when you, uh, before you started uh, doing the music uh, for uh, your scores or whatnot, uh, have there ever been anybody that uh, has inspired you to do the, sto- the scores? Not, I guess not in the sense of, you know, encouragement um, verbally. Lance, you yeah. should do this. Yeah. It was more because of all the inspiration. It might have been something with growing up with my dad in the entertainment business. Yeah. To yeah. me, I mean, I was your average kid. Just because I would be on some of the movie sets, I never took that, I guess, for granted. That was just, that was the way I grew up. I've always respected it. I've always appreciated it. My wife jokes because there's kids' books. I may say, no, I don't know that story. She's like, what were you doing when you were a kid? And I just say, oh, God, you, you want to really know? Yeah. You know, but, but a lot of it was just for some reason that instrumental, instrumental style of music just won me over. Yeah. And I think the one guy that pushed me over the edge was when I started getting into the John Carpenter stuff. Okay. And, it, you know, coincidental with the Halloween and whatnot, I don't know, but I just went, okay, at some point in my life, this would be an interesting thinking yeah. to try and do something like this. Okay. Now, uh, uh, scoring a uh, horror book, has that always been, because that kind of, you know, what inspired you, has, has that always been uh, your favorite genre of, of film to score? I think that in the sense of, and I hope this doesn't sound awful, I feel like they're sometimes a little easier. Yeah. You know, they're not, I mean, man, there is some beautiful stuff out there. Yeah. Sometimes I sit there and I just go, wow, I don't know that I could ever do that. Yeah. You know, and that is, you know, the horror stuff, in, in no offense to anybody that ever does it, because some of these guys do it so incredibly well. I feel it's easier to hit on on a little bit of fear with sound versus let me show you my classical piano ability for this romantic piece. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not a classical pianist by <laughs> any means. Yeah. So I feel that it might be a little easier. Now, that being said, I started to pass out a lot of my demo material at some of these horror conventions that I started attending and then went, well, okay, it's, it's a wonder we're getting calls to do some horror things. Yeah, yeah. That was some of the ways I had the doors opened, and I thought, okay, well, let me walk through and see what happens. That's yeah. exactly how we got the uh, 
the Halloween H25 gig. <laughs> I happened to be there. I gave them the stuff. They liked it. They called. Okay. All right. And you know, good, good as gold, basically. Exactly. You know, and so I just thought, okay, well, I don't in any means want that to be my only form yeah. of expression. Yeah. But if... You know, I've got a couple of things on the table right now that I'm hoping that come through, and both of which happen to be horror. Yep. But that's okay, especially in the ability to try and build the resume and build the contacts and just be able to say, cool, that piece at Blockbuster, I did that. Yep, exactly. And, and before, uh, like even when your dad mentioned that to me, I had no idea. Now, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not huge on horror, but... Uh, I, I do have a respect for the film industry as well as the music industry. It's always been something that most people say, oh, it's just a hobby. You can't make anything of your hobby. Well, that's the same thing they always tell me about being on the radio. But, you know, it's just like, look at me now. Look who I'm talking to. You know, I mean. <laughs> there you go. And, I mean, it's just like, you know, uh, I I actually listened to, uh, I went to your website because I, you know, it's a way to get in contact with you. I went to your site and I've actually listened to some of the uh, things that you played and done and, uh, you were a little samples here and there, but uh, that, that really, uh, it really amazed me. I like the the, uh, the pieces because they they all made sense. You know, they all went in the sequence. Well, and you know, again, and that's how we have found through the website when we can just simply say, "Listen, in this six minute sampler, you're going to hear." Over 30 pieces of music. It, it gives them a broader spectrum, I think, of what we can do. For a while, we had had different samplers with and, and really categorized them in genre. You yeah. know what happened? It flat out took too long to load. Yeah. And people, in this day and age, man, if your page isn't up and they can hear your music within seconds, they're not going to stick around. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why we pulled a bunch of them and revised it. But again, through the contacts, the horror genre seems to keep surfacing with me. Now, hence, like I said, now we're we're looking like we're going to start this little short film right now yeah. on World War II. Okay. And the first thing that I said was, okay, cool. <laughs> it's not horror. It's yeah. still a little darker, but it's a little bit of a different realm. Yep. You know, we were up we we were up for a guy short film in New York on a comedy. It was down to us and one other guy. We didn't get it. Yeah. So be it, and that's going to happen. But the comedic element, we had actually done a documentary DVD that was released. I believe you can actually rent it on Netflix okay. uh, on the Desperate Housewives. Okay. And it was a cousin of mine named J.D. Legier who actually owns a company called Ragtime Monkey. <laughs> and he is a professional editor and for years was a paparazzi. Oh, wow. And they decided to put together some compilations. Well, he hired us and said, okay, Danny Elfman did the music for the original Desperate Housewives theme. I want you to give me some Danny Elfman esque. Okay. Well, we did. That was some of the samples we sent to the guy in New York because that's what he wanted. Yeah. So, I mean, it gave us a way to broaden the horizons and get a little bit away from the horror, just so when I can give somebody a taste of our material, it's not always the same genre, because then, of course, that's probably all we potentially would do. Sure. Now, uh, with uh, you being, uh, uh, I don't know, are you pretty well known with your stuff? I mean, like, locally and then uh, maybe even nationally a little bit? I mean, if someone said, hey, Lance Warlock, said, hey, I know who that guy is. You know what my thought is? No, not a chance. <laughs> in, in the town that I live in, I've lived here for so long that, you know, I still, I don't, what I've done, and I guess this is just the way I've grown up, I don't really tell a lot of people what I've done or what yeah. I do. Yeah. In turn, it always comes back to me. You know, I could have a lady when I was at the music store walk in and say, Hey, Lance, how's it going? I saw your brother today on General Hospital. And I'll look at her like, I had no idea you knew. Yeah. Because I do not walk around and go, Hey, guess who my brother is? Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. that is pretty humorous to me. I, of course, would love to get out and be a little bit more named yeah. so that some of the potentials of mostly of the jobs coming around, I actually, about three months ago, signed with a talent agency out of North Carolina that's going to try and start getting me into some of the more horror conventions. Sure. And I've done a few. The reception has just been totally cool. 
I love talking to these fans because, strangely enough, my dad for years didn't do the conventions. <laughs> Once he started, he would call me and say, do you know that these people actually ask me about you and the Boombox Boys scene? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, because they're so in-depth with these films, they're so smart with knowing every aspect, they know who you are. Yeah. They'd love to see you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Me going to sit there and sign autographs. Come on. I'm the guy who wants to go around to all the stars and get their autographs. Yeah, yeah. So... That's what I do. I go to the conventions. I find. I go take a break. I go around everybody who I want. I pay them. I get their autograph. I go back to my table. <laughs> so I kept thinking, what a fantastic way to get involved with these people and be kind of like one of them and start shopping more of my demo through them as sure. well. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of look at it as though... Any way that I can get out there, I'm going to try and see how it, you know, see how it yeah. goes. Now, uh, we'll, we'll talk about conventions and whatnot. Uh, have you ever had the chance because uh, to meet like guys like, well, I would say more like Tim Burton, because I, I think he he would kind of be, or and Danny Elfman, just because uh, of the music that they've been responsible for and the themes that they've done. Have you ever had a chance to meet those guys and say, hey, you know, I do this too, or... You know, those guys, no. Funny enough, my cousin was in the line at the bank the other day in L.A., and Danny Elfman was behind him, and he just said, man, I really enjoy your stuff. Yeah. The guy who has really given me the time of day has been John Ottman, and John Ottman just recently has released the score. He did the score for Superman. Yeah. And John actually had done the Halloween H2O film at the 25th, um, anniversary convention down in L.A. three years ago, John was on a, a panel of musicians, and I did not, I was not able to hook up with him because after he was done on the interview, he split. His back was killing him. Yeah. He needed to leave. He was doing, I think he was, he had just finished the Holly Berry movie Gothica, and he was starting to work on the Kim Basinger movie Cellular. Okay. And I decided, you know what, i got to go for it. i got to email this guy. And I emailed him, and I said, hey, man, you know, I miss you. Is there any way you'd give me a, a few minutes of your time? I've got some great questions. I'd love to talk to you. He emailed me and said, I absolutely hate email, so let me call you. Okay. And he called me, and we've had a, we've had a you know, fairly consistent. He's a guy that is working in the industry today that I know I can go to with a certain question and say, listen, you're the guy doing it. Tell me about this. Yeah. So right now, I mean, he's he's one of the more bigger composers. The way I look at it, in all honesty, and, and of course, this we're in totally way two different leagues. Yeah. We're competition. Yeah. So it's not that I think he would give me the, you know, oh, I think Lamp should take this job away from me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But in turn, these guys know people who then he might say, you know what, I know this guy who uh, might be perfect for your for your situation. Yeah. So the guys that I'm really interested in are hooking up with directors and producers that do ultimately have the final say-so over a project and what music and, and score they might choose to take. Okay. Well, that's interesting. And uh, uh, another question that I had for you, uh, what uh, being... Uh, music musician and all that, and uh, being part of the industry. Uh, do you have any favorite films of your own? I mean, besides the Halloween films, I mean, any other source of films that you really enjoyed? <sighs> well, or talk about the soundtrack. What What's your favorite soundtrack of yours? Do you have an all time favorite? You know what? Not necessarily. I, I definitely I know that Klaus. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He did the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Movie. Okay. I know he's not doing the second one. I absolutely loved it. Okay. Um, I have always liked John Carpenter stuff. Yeah. I've always liked Danny Elfman, again, with the John Ottman stuff. Um, you know, I, tr I try and just kind of pick and choose a little bit. I mean, I'm always taking stuff and and grasping what different people are doing. Oh, sure. You know, everybody has their their complete own style. Uh, Mark Isham, who did Crash, absolutely fantastic score. Okay. Um, 
you know, and as far as film stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the guy that says, hey, I'll try this. Let me watch this. Because i got to tell you, for the most part, I think most of the new horror movies and even some of the older, they're horrible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, horror really. movies anymore are so ridiculous that yeah. it's like, I had never seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So when they did the remake and they released it on DVD, I rented it. And I thought, you know what? That was cool. Yeah. I just recently, um, because I'm going to have a chance in a couple of days to meet up with Rob Zombie, I recently watched his two films. Yeah. And though they were dark and really not necessarily anything I would typically go and see, I was really thinking he, this guy, has got a very cool creative eye. Yeah. Other than that, the, 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 my newest thing for the last couple months has been buying the DVD series of Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> so there you go. There, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Everybody Loves Raymond. I, that, that's, uh, that, you know, uh, it's been a while since I've met the, the viewers that, uh, if I ever had the chance to interview Ray Romano, that would be, or I tell you, that would be the uh, biggest honor. But, you know, it's so hard to get to him, you know? I mean, it's just. I bet. Yeah, I know some of those guys seem to certainly be that way, and I just I'm the type of guy that when it's out and it's hot on TV, I don't watch it because I don't really sit down and watch a lot of TV. But yeah. ten years after the fact, I think it's the best show on. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and the fact that it, well, it's uh, well nine seasons that it's uh, completed, and yep. yeah, I don't know reruns on TBS they always show, and <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, we're almost out of time with the interview, but. Uh, I, I want to say thank you, first of all, for letting me have the chance to interview you, uh, first of all, because uh, it's been a while since I've done an interview. I kind of took a little time uh, off for, for doing interviews because I've been doing other other things, you know, working on a TV show, working on uh, radio stuff, and uh, it's a truly honor to, to have you be one of the guys that uh, will let me interview you. You know, we've never met. We've never, this is the first time we've ever chatted. You got it. And if I ever have a chance to meet you, or if you ever have a chance to ever make it up here in Northwest Minnesota, Minnesota, that'd be a, that'd be a thrill. That'd be a, probably a day I'd never forget, but you know. <laughs> I think it would be too cool. You know, and the only thing that I would have to say back at you, man, is, is thank you for giving me the time to just spiel on about everything, because oh, yeah. I think that, you know, Things like doing doing these little interviews, I think, are the way to just, you know, tell everybody, obviously, that I've appreciated everything through the years. I still get some very cool emails from fans, and I just, I love to hear from them because everybody is so on the positive about things that I've done, things that my family has done, and I mean, I give anybody the time of day. Oh, yeah, and, uh, well... It's just so so interesting to to talk to somebody, not, and it necessarily not has nothing really to do with, with the fact that you come from a famous father. Oh, maybe a little bit, but just the fact that you're doing something that you love. And you know, just yesterday, uh, well, all I can say today is yesterday. We just recently had uh, a guy who uh, is running for governor, Minnesota governor, stop by the studio and uh, uh, say a few words and whatnot. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. See, and I bet. You see a lot more of that stuff than I do. Well, yeah, well, not necessarily so much as far as uh, celebrities and whatnot. Uh, even though I did have a chance to meet Ned Beatty and interview him, that's actually the kind of the reasons why I was doing the interviews at first. But then I thought, well, hey, you know, I got something here. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so easy to get a hold of people, you know. <laughs> if you were telling me a few years ago that I could do an interview with people, I just uh, big time people that I've, you know, grew up watching over the years was like, nah, you know, they don't want to spend time with a little guy, you know, but, <laughs> but uh, if yeah. They're, if they're smart, in my opinion, they do, because it's always, it's the little guys, if you want to use that term, that matter more than the big guys, because I think the big guys got their heads so far up, yeah. and they just got better things to do, and I feel that they probably feel, well, what, what's it, how's it going to benefit me? Yep, basically. You know, and that's why I say no, no, no. It is truly, it's the mom and pop music stores and, and the small family business owners. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's the smaller people that have, in my words, the bigger mouths. Yeah. And yeah. I just think that, that that's, that's the, that's the best way to go. Now, uh, before, before we uh, end the interview, I have a couple more things to, to mention or whatnot or, or ask you uh, uh, if people want to get a hold of you 
Now, not trying to be too personal or whatever. Sure. Uh, what's your website? And do you have, like, a phone number that people can get a hold of you if you ever want to do something for films or whatever? The website, which actually does have a couple of music samplers and all of our main contact info, um, is it's the production company's name, and it's unit12productions.com. Okay. And the 12 is just a, a numeral one and a two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mentioned that site before, and uh, as I mentioned about hearing your samples, do uh, you have a, another way for people to contact you or any other? Um, I'm probably, I mean, there's everything that's there, but I, but I often, w- when I get posted to be able to do some of these conventions, I believe I always give my email, which is just lancewarlock at charter.net. Okay. And I always encourage anybody to drop me a line and say, and say hi. Oh, yeah. And, and like I said, if it wasn't for the email and the internet, I don't think I'd be able to. <laughs> the internet is, is so awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it can get you in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. But then again, it can be the best resource because it's so quick and right there. Yeah, and it, it, you're kind of connected with the world, basically. You know? Yeah. You imagine how many people worldwide are online right to this minute as we speak. You know, it's just like... You got it. <laughs> but... Uh, and one more last thing, and I mentioned to the, to you this earlier on, uh, I want you to give me a station ID, and what that means is you can say who you listen to, what station you listen to, and say who you are. Or, or say who you are, who you listen to, and what station you listen to. Now, you probably, <laughs> since I never gave you a, told you really what it used to say, I, I, will, I will tell you. You could probably say something like, hey, this is Lance, or a movie musician, Lance Warlock. Uh, and you listen to Frankie Slauson on uh, Pioneer 90.1, or, or whatever you want to come up with. It's up to you. Oh man, now you're killing me because I don't I don't listen to a lot of radio. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, in a way, you know, with, with that, I'm just trying to bring back the old ways of radio because back in the day, when people wanted, to, you know, whether it's a celebrity that called in or just a regular Abbott Joe that did something pretty awesome. People would say, or the DJ would say, "Hey, can you give me a station ID to say who you are, who you listen, or who you are, who you listen to, and what station you listen to?" So I would probably have to say that uh, I, as Lance Warlock, would have to give a shout out to Dale Roth at Wenatchee Zone KW3 103.9. Okay, <laughs> well that'd be great. But we're playing here night front one. We're not there. We're not at that station. <laughs> so we need to pioneer ninety three oh one? Ninety nine zero dot one. Nine zero dot one. Ninety part one, basically. So we are here with Frankie Slauson on Pioneer ninety point one. All right, cool. That that will do just fine. <laughs> right, so the people that uh, are listening to this interview, well. Normally I do an encore, but I, I think uh, we'll just keep this just one shot. But I probably what I will do because this is uh, will air well at well you know will air right now. Uh, uh, try to use it as a Halloween theme as well because I'm going to uh, air the interview that I had with your dad as well, uh, where it gets closer more to Halloween and whatnot. So I think that'd be kind of cool. Oh yeah, that would be cool. But uh, if uh, if you uh, want to listen online, if you have a chance, I don't know how how often you're on the computer or whatnot. Uh, uh, www.pioneer90.org is the address, and uh, if you have online capability, which I know you do, I uh, just put it in there. Okay, uh, we got website. We just updated the website, so there's actually a little uh, profile on myself. If you ever want to take a look at that, uh, there are community volunteers or radio hosts, and uh, we have a, a webcam as well to see who's on there and just anything you want to know and stuff about the college because we're actually a college, ra- college radio station right now. Now, if I go to the studio webcam, who's going to be? Nobody's there. Nobody's there. <laughs> Some, somebody was there, but he uh, was done for the day, I guess. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I want to say thanks for letting uh, me talk to you and uh, keep trucking, man. I would say anytime and uh, I would love to uh, do this anytime you uh, feel that it would be uh, of interest. Okay. We'll talk to you again in the future, I hope. You got it. See you later. Thanks, Frankie. Bye-bye.